All right, so let's get started here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure uh, to be your MC for our <clears throat> virtual career panel. I am Tammy McBride, Career Connected Learning Specialist for the North Central Educational Service District. On behalf of the North Central ESD, Apple STEM Network, and WorkSource or Okanagan County, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you making the time to join us today, and we hope that uh, you will learn a lot in this half an hour together, and we have a great panel lined up for you. Uh, we would like to give a warm shout out to Christy O'Neill with WorkSource Okanagan County, who is uh, in partnership with us for today's event and is on the call today as a panelist. Uh, we want to thank you and acknowledge the Okanagan U.S. Forest Services for joining us today and taking personal time out of their schedules for the panel discussions. Today we have two career professionals from Okanagan U.S. Forest Services who will give a short individual presentation about what they have to offer. Each career panelist will be followed by a short question and answer. And uh, you will, as an attendee, you will need to type out your questions to the panelists using the Q&A, or if you are Facebook Live, you can ask your questions there. Uh, to begin this program, I am pleased to introduce Chris Furr, District Reg uh, Ranger for Methal Valley, to deliver opening remarks and is our first panelist. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and, and as Tammy said, my name is Chris Furr, and I'm the District Ranger with the Forest Service um, in the Methal Valley. And I'm really excited um, to talk to you about careers in the Forest Service along with my coworker, Meg Trebone, who's gonna be joining us as well. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you uh, first about the Forest Service and some examples of career opportunities. And then you'll hear from both Meg and I on our stories and experiences in working for the Forest Service. So this isn't gonna be a presentation about how to apply for Forest Service jobs. I could spend an hour talking just about that and we're, we're really starting our seasonal work now. And those jobs were filled back in the winter. Um, but I, I am going to have some valuable tips to, to share with you. And we'll spend some time talking about in opportunities later in this presentation. So this is our mission. Um, you may have seen um, also our motto, which is caring for the land and serving people. And it outlines some of the complexities of our jobs and it can be difficult to do. You know, sometimes um, these, these things don't line up and it's, it's one of the reasons why my job is, is never boring. The, the Forest Service is an agency under the U.S. Department of Agriculture and, and manage 193 million, million acres of public land, roughly the size of Texas. These public lands are in the form of national forests and grasslands. And there are 154 national forests and 20 grasslands, each with several ranger districts located in nine different geographic regions. Congress established the Forest Service in 1905 to pro provide quality water and timber for the nation's benefit. Today, the agency manages public land for multiple uses, such as recreation, and for the sustained yield of renewable resources, such as water, forage, wildlife, and wood. Forest Service also makes up the largest forestry research organization in the world. Forest Service research stations provide the scientific and technical knowledge that helps sustain the, nationals, uh, the nation's natural resources on all lands. And if you like science and see yourself as a future scientist, um, really Im important research on climate, water, and some of the pressing issues of our time are done by the Forest Service, you can be part of it. You know, I'm, I'm partial to the, the land management side of our agency. Um, that's where I've spent most of my time. But, um, but in addition to um, the National Forest System where, where land management resides and research, that we also um, have emphasis areas of, of law enforcement and state and private forestry. And state and private, 
uh, forestry uh, work across the boundaries of national forests to state states, um, tribes, communities, and uh, and landowners, and provide technical and financial assistance to landowners and resource managers. The Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest, where Meg and I work, is part of the Northwest region of the U.S. Forest Service, which contains 17 national forests, two national scenic areas, a national grassland, and two national volcanic monuments, all within the states of Oregon and Washington. The state of Washington has five national forests, um, plus um, you can see in the bottom right corner just a little sliver of the Umatilla um, that's, that's headquartered out of Northeast Oregon. The Okanagan Wenatchee is one of the largest forests in the lower 48 and the diversity of the landscape that we have the privilege to manage is exceptional. The forest lies on the east um, of the Cascade Crest with elevations from below 1,000 feet to over 9,000 feet and precipitation varies widely from more than 70 inches along the crest to less than 10 inches at the eastern edge. And this greatly affects forest and vegetation types across the area. You know, and the forest is, is over 4 million acres and stretches from the Canadian border um, 180 miles south. Meg and I work for the Methow District, uh, one of seven on the forest, and it's at the top of your map. And it's both the largest district on the forest and within the region at about 1.3 million acres. Shifting gears into careers here, um, this slide gives you a small sample of some jobs within the agency. You know, we're, we're in a rural place here in Winthrop and I, I like the rural lifestyle. Um, and it's not really noted here, but, but you can also work for the Forest Service in IT, accounting, or a number of administrative fields. And you can do that from, uh, from cities like Portland, Milwaukee, Atlanta, and Denver. But one of, the, one of the things I most appreciate about the Forest Service is some of the places that I've gotten to live and some of the beautiful landscapes I get to be part of managing for the American people. And I'm gonna show you some more pictures that give you more job ideas and share a few things with you. So this is a traffic jam in Northern New Mexico, um, but, um, but seriously, range management is a field with a lot of opportunities in the Forest Service. Uh, we manage grazing allotments for both sheep and cattle across the West. And it's a good opportunity to work closely with ranchers and spend a lot of time in the field. And again, this is, this is an area where, um, where we have a lot of opportunities within the agency. And Meg's gonna talk to you a lot about fire here, but, um, you know, one thing that I appreciate is being able to work outside of my field. I'm, I'm not a firefighter by, by career, but I do have opportunities to work in fire. Um, and like here, I'm waiting for a helicopter ride earlier in my career in Georgia. And, and here on a prescribed fire on my last forest in New Mexico. This was also a great day um, in New Mexico um, in the field administering a special use permit with the ski hill there. And we manage a cross country ski permit here um, as well as the Loop Loop ski area. So um, basically they have special use permits with us, um, but, uh, but the resort is on forest um, um, service managed property. So um, this bears a lot, um, and uh, just to, to highlight, uh, you know, you can work with um, work closely with managing wildlife with our state partners. Um, we manage habitat, and this is actually my wife Catherine, um, who's working with the state to measure and weigh bear cubs before they come out of hibernation. And occasionally, we get to take part in some in some very cool management work. Um, in some pretty spectacular places. Um, some forests have um, big networks of caves. Um, and some of those are managed for both recreation and for wildlife habitat. We conduct all sorts of uh, wildlife surveys uh, for different species. 
we work closely with partners conducting research like this Raptor study on Chilean Ridge here on the district. We also sell timber uh, products as part of our restoration work and have all sorts of jobs that support this work. Um, by background, I'm a forester, but there are some jobs that require some specialized skills, but, but not a college degree. And we've talked a, a little about fire and I'm sure Meg will touch on this, but if you're really into aviation, there are jobs and roles where you get to work very closely managing um, and working with aviation resources. We hire archeologists who study and report on historic and prehistoric people and artifacts within the lands that we manage. And if you like to work with, with, um, with stock, we use horses and mules to support work in the backcountry and wilderness both to support trail work and, and wilderness work, and also firefighting. We also work um, closely with communities to do environmental education. Um, we host events like this fishing derby and seek input uh, from the public on projects on national forest land. So this really wasn't meant to be a comprehensive job list. It's just some fun examples of opportunities that are out there. Uh, one of the great things about the Forest Service is the diverse, diversity of career opportunities across the country. You know, maybe maybe you never want to leave Washington or even your county, and that's fine too. Uh, Meg and I are both going to tell you stories that show you different examples of moving up and getting different experiences within the agency. But one thing that's consistent throughout all this is this website, USA Jobs here. Um, all of our temporary and permanent hires go through this website. So if anything here that you hear today is interesting, take note of this, um, USA Jobs. And we'll also share our contact info so that um, if you have questions in the future, you can reach out. Um, I'd also just encourage you, if you do have interest to go into your local ranger district, um, once things are back open after, after COVID and introduce yourself, um, let them know you're looking for work and open for opportunities they may have. Um, that was the big part of me uh, getting started with the agency, so I'd encourage you to do that. And so um, that's my little uh, part about the Forest Service, and I'll be back talking to you uh, more specifically about my career and some thoughts, but I, I'm going to pause here for, for questions before we go to Meg. Thanks, Chris. Yes, if you have questions for Chris right now, please remember to use your question and answer area. Um, and if you are Facebook Live, just um, you can type them there. We will open that up for right now if anybody has any questions. Right, Chris, we have one. Um, are there any summer jobs available? So we, we do hire for um, every summer. You know, we have, we have folks working in wildlife, um, within range, within recreation and trails, firefighters, um, you know, but the, the job hiring process for us starts back in the fall. And so um, that, that's when you would apply for those jobs in the summer. And that's why I say like, if you go in and introduce yourself now, tell them you're interested um, and to contact you when these uh, uh, opportunities come up. You'll also have people that'll come to your school um, and come around looking for interest. And so it's really good to pay attention when that happens. Um, they'll do that in the summer and fall as well. But um, we do have volunteer opportunities right now too. That's a great way to get your foot in the door and also just to, to start to better understand what opportunities might be out there. All right, thanks, Chris. Is there any other questions for right now? There will be another time that you can ask. Yep. I'll head here into Meg's. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, we would love to, um, I would love to introduce our next panelist, uh, Chris or um, Meg Trebon, 
uh, Environmental Coordinator for Methow Valley and Tenasket Ranger Districts. Meg, take it away. Oh, oh Meg. Sorry, I thought I had unmuted it. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, let's start again. Hi, everyone. I'm really, really happy to be talking to you today about the Forest Service. Um, I'm probably the poster child for getting into this agency through a very non-traditional career path. Uh, for me, I'm a first-generation college student in my family. Um, my brothers and sisters um, went to college, and therefore, I would go to college. Uh, I ended up getting a degree in humanities, which is great for learning how to learn, learning how to see things. Thank you, Chris. Um, and so, but not very good about to do, to do very many other things. Um, you'll see a very antiquated co computer in the center photo of that slide. So that's the next thing I did. I went to go study computers and got a degree in computers. And then I realized I'd have to spend the rest of my life working indoors. And that didn't set well with me at all. So um, I ended up doing a little bit of traveling. And one of the things I did is I came here to the Menow Valley and I was really attracted to the idea of living here. I felt compelled that I must come and live in the Menow and hike and do whatever I needed to do. The Forest Service to me was something that you had to do. You had to have, oh, you had to be able to carry an 80 pound pack for three weeks in the wilderness and subsist on the fish that you caught. I had this notion that it was something far more uh, independent and rigorous than it really was. And so I never saw myself as being a part of it. What I did was I chose a place to live because I was attracted to it and I found work to sustain me that had nothing to do with my college degree at all. But then my job ended, the restaurant I was working with closed for a period of time and a forest service buddy of mine said, why don't you come to work for the Forest Service? They've got jobs. And I went and talked to people. Like Chris suggested, that's the number one way to make a connection on anywhere you want to work, whether it's the Forest Service or anywhere, is you make a connection by hopefully going in and seeing somebody face-to-face -face or calling on the phone and finding out what they have. Um, people remember you much more clearly that way. They know that you put yourself out there. And so as a result of that, I got picked up by the Forest Service as uh, working for a visitor center here locally. Um, turns out that was right when the Forest Service started uh, digitizing all of their maps. And that ties it into that map on the right side. So through my degree in humanities that taught me how to learn and my interest in computers, which got me that background, and then working for the Forest Service as a temporary employee at the visitor center, somebody said to me, hey, we're gonna computerize all of our maps and you know computers, would you help us out? And so I did. Nobody knew anything about it that we were all learning together back then. And that touches on one of the elements of the Forest Service that I wanna share with you. One of the great things about working for this agency is that when there's something new to be learned, you will be supported in your education to learn it. Um, and that, that actually goes all the way to supporting you getting degrees through our apprenticeship. We have apprenticeship programs um, in which you can be a college student studying something like forestry or biology and turn that into a position with the Forest Service after graduation. But for me, those three things tied in together, turns out I'm kind of a map geek and I worked um, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard of a geographic information system, which we use to display maps, but also analyze data. And it was a very powerful experience getting all everyone's data in. Um, another element about the Forest Service that that illustrated to me is how much there is to learn from each other. We have so many professionals that are passionate in, passionate about and expert in their field areas, whether it's fish or wildlife, hydrology, soil, um, archeology, span vegetation management, you name it. And people are always willing to help you understand and learn what it is that they're doing. Go ahead and let's go to the next slide. So um, after 
one of the things I've always done with the Forest Service is work in fire. Uh, while I was working these other summer jobs in the fall and the spring, I would work on the fire crew because that's what kept me going. Um, and eventually that landed me a permanent job as an assistant fire engine supervisor. Uh, and so what fire has done for me uh, personally is allowed me to meet so many amazing people and travel all across the country from Florida to Alaska, up to Canada, all across the West. Let's go to the next slide, please. Um, this one is at the County Line Fire in Idaho back in the 90s. And so you get to see all kinds of things that are going on in the environment that are as in part as a result of past policies and actions, as well as the camaraderie of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people getting together to work towards a common goal, which is to contain and suppress the fire and keep people safe. Next slide, please. So as a result of doing this work, you get to see the impacts of one of the primary agents of change on our natural landscape, which is fire, and how it's been around for, it's how these forests evolved, but then how it acts now and how it's been changing in the 30 years I've been working for the Forest Service. Um, it's a pretty powerful thing to be able to see uh, what kind of power this actual uh, what fire does, but then also to be coming together to working towards uh, trying to control it. And, and it crosses boundaries. It's across Forest Service, State, Bureau of Land Management, County. Uh, we work together right next to private landowners. Uh, it's very much an all hands on deck kind of thing. All right, next slide, please. So as I said, the, the opportunities for work in fire are pretty widespread. My primary focus was in aviation. Um, I got, was, I've been on helicopter crews since the early 90s and uh, went all over the West helping out on fires. Uh, shuttled a lot of people, a lot of cargo, many, many recon flights, aerial ignition. I was never a helicopter repeller, but that's another path that a lot of people take getting into fire if they want to work also in aviation. Um, I also have worked as a dozer boss and I've had uh, many other opportunities where I've been a fire effects monitor. There's all kinds of, of positions and qualifications that you can get in the fire, working on hand crews, engine crews, um, like I said, repelling, smoke jumping, um, immense opportunities there. Let's go to the next slide, please. Some of those opportunities here were local. Um, I've been all over the wildernesses across the West. I've been in so many wildernesses by air sometimes that I've been kind of spoiled as well in, as in national parks. Um, but again, the, the element of a people that you work together is a huge part of what has kept me in this agency. Um, people from all kinds of backgrounds come together and some of them only work for one season or maybe a few seasons while they're going to college, getting their degree to go do something else. And um, many other folks end up getting on in careers with the Forest Service or with other agencies. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this was a great trip to Alaska. The things that you do in Alaska surpass anything that you can imagine down in the lower 48 because the scale of the landscape is so much bigger. Uh, there's all kinds of opportunities to work up there as well. The, one of the things, as I've mentioned in fire, is that you travel everywhere because the fire seasons are evolving throughout the spring to fall in different parts of the country. So on this particular year, I spent the spring up in Alaska. Actually, I spent the spring down in New Mexico, and then I went to Alaska and then came back to the greater Columbia River area because we had a lot of fires that year as well. Let's go to the next slide. This was a, uh, these slides, these next few slides are what it, from when I was on a hotshot crew. Um, the dimension of fire, working in fire and getting onto a hotshot crew takes your knowledge and your skills up to a whole nother level because you're expected to have uh, just work at a higher level of cohesion, working together. Um, the way you get on these, these higher level crews like hotshots is you need to spend a couple, two or three years at least working on probably a hand crew or an engine crew. 
and kind of building up your familiarity with fire and your fitness. And then you can apply to these uh, crews like hot shots or repellers or smoke jumpers. But the opportunities are there. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, this the cohesion here from this crew. You know, one of the things for me, I'm a pretty independent person. I'm used to being um, kind of figuring out what I want to do and going for it. The opportunity to work in fire was an opportunity to learn how to work with others and uh, to depend on others. Um, those are things that you need, skills that you need in almost any job you have. Uh, definitely, you'll get it working in fire. Next slide. Nothing like digging fire line for miles and miles together. Uh, the hard physical work, you need to be ready for um, not sleeping much. You also need to be ready for a lot of boredom because there's a lot of times when nothing is happening at all and you're just doing fitness training or you're refurbishing your gear. Uh, maybe you're polishing your rig for the hundredth time. But when things get busy, they do get busy. And so it's really important to have that mindset of being prepared. Next slide, please. One of the biggest parts of my job, one of the most valued parts of my job has been in prescribed fire. So as you may, not, as you may know, we use prescribed fire that we actually go and deliberately set the woods on fire at specific times under specific conditions to meet um, very clear goals. Sometimes it's just to get rid of the slash from thinning. Other times it's to reintroduce the effects of wildfire after it's been kept out of the landscape for decades. Um, one of the things I noticed with all of these slides, you'll never see a person dragging a drip torch who isn't smiling. There's, a, there's something about that feeling of satisfaction in this job where you are making a difference and to be able to go back five, 10, 25 years later and see what the woods looks like and see how healthy and resilient it is, is a very satisfying thing. Those kinds of experiences can be had anywhere in, in just about any um, aspect of the Forest Service. Yeah, just a lot of hard work going into all this effort um, across the nation right now and a big emphasis on it. It's a pretty critical factor to helping our forests be resilient to fire. Next slide, please. See, she's smiling. What did I tell you? Um, folks come into this job. You know, we take people on their very first year once they've gone to guard school and we'll have them prescribe burning. And it's actually, if you're interested in fire, it's actually the one of the, one of the most important things to do is get yourself a job somewhere where they do prescribe burning because you can learn more about fire behavior through prescribed fire than you can in a season worth of wildfires, especially if that season is pretty slow for wildfires. To be able to deliberately apply fire to the landscape and then see how it acts in a very controlled manner is a very good way to learn about it. All right, next slide. So this picture shows an area that was burned actually probably about two months after we did the prescribed burn. You can see there's not many, much fuel on the ground, not much slash from thinning. There's a little bit of char on the bark, but that's nothing less than would have been there from a natural occurrence of wildfire. The soil is bursting now with chemicals that have been released from the burning. And so the greenery is just coming alive. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful thing to see that after, when I look at this picture, I don't just see yellow flowers and green trees and pieces of black, I see resilience. And you can be a part of making that happen. All right, next slide. So this is a shot of First Butte Lookout. Um, it's a place I'll go up to, the, the lookout's not open right now, but it's a sweet spot. So I'll go drive up there and camp out at night. Um, I think the symbolism of this slide to me with the lookout is that you can find opportunities if you're looking out for them, to be corny about it. Um, with the Forest Service, there's a lot that you can do, whether, like I said, whether it's for just a few years while you're in between college, or if it's something that lasts you for a lifetime, there's all kinds of uh, opportunities for growth. So briefly, after 25 years in fire, 20, yeah, something like that, 
Um, I went to become on to become a special use permit administrator, uh, working with the ski area permits, like Chris mentioned, as well as a lot of our other outfitter guide permits. And eventually led into this job that I have now where I coordinate a lot of the environmental planning that we do. That's another geeky side of me. I'm kind of a planner, but it's, it's all of those jobs, um, all of those skills I've had have uh, coincided very much with things that the agency needed. So was able to work out a pretty strong pathway all through my life. Um, I guess the other underlying thing I would say to you is definitely, I believe in this agency's mission. I invite you to call me and talk or email me if you have questions about it. Um, absolutely go make contact with someone local to you at your nearest forest service office and find out how you can be a part of the agency if that's what you're interested in. Any questions? I can't see if there are questions, by the way. I can't see the chat screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm fielding that for you. Oh, thank you. Give me one moment here. <laughs> so we do have a few, but I don't. Oh, here we go. Um, what is the best path to take uh, to land a job in the agency? I'm a junior in high school. You're in a great time to be asking that question. I think the first thing I do is um, if you have a Forest Service office nearby you, uh, it's to make contact with them. Think about what kind of work that you might be interested in doing. Typically the entry level jobs that we have are in recreation, working at, um, on trails or uh, wilderness ranger or campgrounds. We have entry level jobs in fire, working on the hand crew and the engine crews, and we take people who have no experience in those jobs. So think about the kind of things you're interested in doing. Go to that local office and make contact with people and find out you know, what kind of opportunities do you have locally. You can also make an account for yourself on USA Jobs, the website Chris showed you. And uh, you can basically make a list of job, the types of jobs that you're interested in. Come about roughly September, October, look for announcements for temporary hire. And that's when you're gonna to need to be ready to get your job application in. Uh, sadly, it's not the easiest experience, but there are a lot of people in the Forest Service who wanna help you out with it. Wanna make sure you have the documentation and the information that you need to do those applications. If you have any inclination about a career in the natural sciences, Chris mentioned we have all these research stations um, we have at the district, we have botanists, hydrologists, wildlife biologists, aquatic biologists. If you have an interest in that way, look into our apprenticeship programs. And Chris, correct me if I'm using the wrong phrase. I think we might've changed the name of them. Uh, but those are ways in which you can be going to college and taking courses. And then in the summertime, you come and work for the forest service in that field. Um, and there's like a mutual relationship there where in part, some of your tuition is paid for. Um, that's something that you should look into. I think the biggest thing though is networking. Um, network with the folks that are around you and ask questions. Okay, Meg, you have a few others. Um, there's one that says, where are you located and what is your contact information? Um, I can post it, but if you guys could slide to your contact information, that would be helpful. I work in the Meta Valley Ranger District out of Winthrop. Actually, Chris and I both work there. So um, basically, it's you, you'll see our, our phones and our emails there. And as Chris said, you know, the hiring for this summer was completed last fall and winter, but um, you know, if you were to contact me and interested in a fire job, I would give you the contact information for our fire management officer um, or one of his staff. And I would put you in touch with the people in the field that you're interested in. Okay, and is there a Youth uh, Conservation Corps YCC in Central Washington? Yes, there's one in 
Colville. Chris, can you speak to that? Okay, so I, there's one over in Colville and I think we also have one down in central Washington. I I'm, apologize that I don't have that information for you, but I'll make sure that we get that to Tammy and make that available for you. Okay, um, Chris, you had a couple come in after you were, you were done. Um, are most forest jobs seasonal? Um, so that's the way to, um, to, to get your foot in the door is through a seasonal position, um, you know, a temporary seasonal position. And like Meg said, a lot of people do that, you know, either um, during summers or that sort of thing. We, we also have permanent positions, which are seasonal in nature. Um, so, you know, you get to go spend the winter um, doing something else, but um, it's a it's a mix and it really depends. But uh, but in the West, uh, um, there there are quite a few seasonal jobs. If, if that's something that interests you, you can you can be a permanent employee, but only work, um, you know, six to eight months a year kind of a thing for the Forest Service and then do other things in the off. -season. Okay, there is another one. How much time is spent outside or inside? It's, um, it, it, you know, and I'll talk about that a little bit here, um, but it, it, earlier in your career, the more you move up, the more, the more you tend to get into administrative fields. Um, most of us get into these jobs because we want to be outside. And, uh, and then here I am 20 years later, um, and, and I'm in the office most most of the time. Um, but you know there's a there's a mix. If you really um, if the outside is a is a passion for you and that's what drives you, then you can stay in careers where where that's that's where the bulk of your job is. Okay, and looks like possibly last question. Um, is there a forestry job that needs tech skills? or opportunities? Yeah, you know, um, forestry and really across the board, right, there, there are jobs that are, that are tech, technical. And so we have technician series um, where, again, you don't necessarily need a college degree. Some, some college credit might help you, um, um, but, but, you know, you can work at some of these jobs, like Meg said, uh, you, you know, you can start with no experience, basically. It's just about finding the right um, internship or the right opportunity to start building yourself some experience. And, you know, YCC was a great question because that's a way to get something on your resume and work in, in the field. Volunteering is another way to do that. And then just broaden your, um, your horizon on what the opportunities are out there they can really help you decide what, what you want to do. Okay, is there any other questions? Again, if you do have any questions, you'll have to use the Q&A if you are on Zoom with us or if you are on Facebook Live, you can type your questions there. So, and I'll, I'll go quick. I know we're, we're running a little bit um, over, but, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through a few more slides if that works, Tammy. Sure, yeah. So, um, so you know, like, like Meg, the Forest Service has been very good to me. Um, I've worked for the Forest Service for over 20 years in the last 15 um, in the Ozarks, Taos, New Mexico, and, and now here in Winthrop. And one of the things I really appreciate is they've all been communities where people come and spend time and money to vacation in. So um, quality of life and things to do outside in these areas are a major motivator for me. And I can't think of another way that I would have had this opportunity. Um, I also had the opportunity to meet this young biologist who I've now been lucky enough to be married to for the last 14 years. Um, so that's something I can thank the Forest Service for. And, you know, I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do when I was in your position, but I did know what I didn't want to do. And you heard this from Meg, but um, I didn't want to have a, a regular job where I went into an office every day. And so the, the Forest Service granted me that wish, even though now I am in an office, like I just said, you know, um, this is my last office in New Mexico. And 
who has an office where a black bear casually strolls by your, your window. So even though it's an office setting, um, it, it's still a little bit different. So um, I do love to get outside, particularly horseback in the wilderness, but the work, um, the work on the ground gets done by people who I supervise. The, the Methouse is a complex district with over a thousand miles of trails, uh, numerous threatened and endangered species, 25 campgrounds, 200 special use permits and a complex fire program. In the summer season, there are near 100 people working on the district and 40 of them just in fire. But I think the thing I love most about my job is that every day is different. And, and at any time we have projects going on with a mix of things like forest restoration, road repair, trail construction, or habitat improvement for fisheries. Um, this is a slide from a day I was part of a, a group uh, hiking cutthroat trout fingerling, fingerlings down into the Rio Grande. A, a lot of days are meetings, but the subjects of the meetings, calls, and conversation within my staff can really change by the hour. In another part of my role is I act as a member of our forest uh, leadership team. We meet monthly, and I'm one of seven district rangers plus other staff who make up this team. Um, we make decisions for the forest on things like budgets, our program of work for the year, and prioritization of, of hiring. And so it's, a, it's the most difficult part of my job. Um, you have to be part of making decisions that sometimes aren't what's best for your particular district or your interest, but they're good for the larger forest as a whole. But we get into this line of work. Um, and you've heard it a lot uh, because we, we want to be outdoors, but the part of my job that I enjoy now most is the team that I get to work with uh, on the district. Um, I really love problem solving and to have a smart group of people who you get to solve complex problems with is, is a great thing. I mean, this, this job is not just a job where you show up and, and get a paycheck um, and, and do your work. It's, it's an opportunity to be a part of something bigger and contribute um, towards something, um, towards making something better for the future, right? And and um, and I know that's more, that's more than I knew to hope hope for when I was in your position. And and I just want to tell you, you know, I'm I'm not special. I'm a I'm a farm kid from Mississippi, um, and your your grades are important, but but it's not it's not everything, right? Um, I didn't make straight A's, and and if you get in and um, if land management is your goal, um, you can do it through a state agency or through a partner or through the Forest Service. Um, but what's important is to just be open about the opportunities that you see. Um, maybe things that, that aren't within how you, how you immediately see yourself um, and your plan going, right? So some of the best things that have happened to me have, um, have been just because of opportunities that, that came about that weren't necessarily in line. Um, you know, we tend to think of, of our life as kind of linear, um, but sometimes we can take, um, take paths um, and, and go do things that we didn't envision, but they end up being very good things for us that we could not have seen. And so I, I feel like um, the Forest Service gives opportunities to get your foot in the door, find out about other opportunities, and then if you show up and do good work, um, more opportunities come from that. And so um, just, just an example, right, is that you get your foot in the door um, and, um, and maybe you get an opportunity in Nevada or some far-flung place where, where you don't necessarily want to go work, but it's good experience in your field. Um, you, you know, those have been good things for, for me to take, to take advantage of those things. So, you know, if you do that type of thing, you'll, you'll go far no matter your, your organization, uh, what, what organization you're part of. You know, I, I could not have, uh, have seen or dreamed of where I am now when I graduated high school. And the Forest Service, um, you know, has given me some open doors to walk through, you know, and some that, that have really tested my confidence um, in myself, but, but it's really been a, been a great journey and, and not something that I would trade for anything. Um, and so, um, so yeah, you know, we talked about USA jobs and keeping tabs on that. Um, and then we also talked about volunteering, you know, and, and so um, you can do that either through us or partner organizations. So there's some great organizations out there that do work with us, you know, you know thinking about it from a recreation standpoint, there's a 
Washington Trails Association. There's also, you know, whatever your interests are, you know, Google will help you there. there there's probably an organization that we work with, partner with, um, where you might have opportunity. So um, get your foot in the door through a seasonal or volunteer position, and it'll give you an opportunity, like we've said, um, you know, to, to, to get that insight that, that you'll be looking for. So I think, um, I think with that, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see if there is any other questions, but, uh, but I think I'm done. Again, if you are with us um, on Zoom, please use the Q&A if you have any final questions. If you are Facebook Live, please type it. Okay, well, um, I think that sums up our virtual career panel today. So, um, I just want to thank you all very much for your participation in this virtual career panel. I hope you enjoyed this program. If you need any further information or have any questions, you can reach out to myself, Tammy McBride, at T-A-M-I-M -M at ncesd.org, or you can also uh, get in touch with Chris Fur which is C-H-R-I-S dot F-U-R-R at U-S-D-A dot G-O-V. Um, and I just want to say for more information to keep up to date on these types of events and other virtual career panels, um, you can follow us on our Career Connected Learning Okanagan Facebook page or also the Apple STEM Network Facebook page. Um, in closing, on behalf of the North Central ESD, Apple STEM Network, and WorkSource Okanagan County, we would like to thank you um, and also thank the Okanagan US Forest Services for participating today. Thank you all very much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.